We're back here at the National Farms Museum here at NRA headquarters. I'm with my friend Phil Schreier, senior curator here at said museum. Phil, what have you got there? What's the next treasure here on the curator's corner, sir? Probably the most uh, prolific of all the German handguns made during the, uh, the Second World War. It's the, uh, what's commonly called the Walther P38. Uh, it is a, uh, nearly a million of them were manufactured and uh, it was the standard German uh, military sidearm in the Second World War. I know a lot of people immediately identify uh, World War II and German pistols with the Luger, right. which was certainly had a great cachet of its own. Uh, a lot of people wanted to bring one of those home as a souvenir, uh, but it was really the P-38 uh, by the Second World War uh, that was in the majority of, of German military holsters. Now, you, you mentioned about people bringing things back, and you're, you're such a student of history. I, I understand back in, in the World War II time, there were certain, I guess, rules and regulations about bringing like, war trophies home. So people did do that, and they could do it. I guess some people did it, it, it uh, illegally, but you actually, I guess, could bring some things back. Right, you could actually uh, uh, get a, uh, a signed certificate from your uh, commanding officer uh, and bring, uh, bring back a war trophy, uh, and usually, the make, model, and serial number of the gun will be listed on that piece of paper. Uh, that adds a great deal of value to the gun uh, if it was, uh, if you still have the, what they call bring back papers mm -hmm. uh, with a World War II captured uh, gun from either the Pacific or the, uh, or the European theaters. Obviously, the European guns still command higher prices with the collectors. It's beginning to change a little bit, mm. but uh, I'd say if you had a, uh, a Luger or a Walther that had uh, a sign off by a member of uh, the 506th Infantry, Parachute Infantry Regiment, uh, you've got a great gun with a great piece of paper brought back by, uh, by the unit that's now uh, monikered the Band of Brothers outfit. So wow. uh, the price keeps escalating. <laughs> uh, the provenance. Yeah, <laughs> which is everything in gun collecting is chain of custody or provenance. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about the, the Walther, the P38. Well, these were made uh, by a number of different group uh, manufacturers, Walther, obviously, uh, and you can tell that it was made by Walther uh, because on this side it says BYF, and everybody, no, this is, uh, this is made by Mauser, which is the Mauser code BYF. Right. Walther had a code AC and uh, another uh, code uh, uh, for spare work. There were three manufacturers. Right. Of the uh, of the P38, uh, and you can tell the, uh, the by the code the manufacturer, and then under that would be a uh, a two digit for the year in which it was made. Okay, so just um, like with the, the 1911A, they had how many different manufacturers with the Walthers or the P38s? Uh, I guess they were cranking out as many as they could over there in Germany, as and in as many places as they could. Right, yeah. and uh, you'll find uh, a gun that. Uh, gives no end of satisfaction as far as collecting interest. Uh, I know we talked once about the Colt Pocket 49 and uh, Flaterman said there were 200 different yeah. types. Uh, you won't find, uh, you might find just about that many with the Walthers, oh uh, uh, black grips, bake light grips, the brown grips, uh, the, uh, uh, the two line uh, code or the one line code, you know, uh, code in your, uh, all kinds of different variations on the three different uh, manufacturers. Which is funny, when they were getting this done, they were doing whatever they could to get these firearms out there. Little did they realize they were setting up gun enthusiasts and collectors like us to go, okay, there's number 152, 153. Right. There's the bank light groups, there's the other groups, there's a one line code. And you know what, today, because collecting really came into its own in the post-World War II era of most anything. Mm. Uh, now you've got magazines and books and television shows yes. about collecting. So now you've got guys on a factory line somewhere and they'll go, okay, well, this, is, this, this change is going to, to result in collectors wanting to, uh, and, and with stamps, you know, uh, the, the, uh, in the 60s, the Postal Service uh, misprinted the Dag Hammarskjöld stamp. Oh. And instead of just letting that sheet with the inverted colors go out, they just decided to print four million more of them. So oh. 
you know, they actually mass produced an error. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and gun collecting is pretty much, uh, you know, similar. They're things. the ones that sometimes have the best cachet is when there's something with a little blemish or an error, an error it's like, it's just crazy. Well, how can someone come and see this fun example of a wall thrower or a Mauser or you know it, of a P-38? Out the P-38, <laughs> no matter by who made it, uh, is available for viewing along with our collection of wonderful Lugers and Sauers and other German uh, firearms from the uh, 20th century. Uh, it's just part of a 3,000 gun exhibit and 20,000 uh, square feet at the uh, National Firearms Museum located in Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, we're open seven days a week, free admission, plenty of parking. We're at the intersection of Route 50 and 66. If you can't visit us off the interstate, come visit us on the internet 24 hours a day at nramuseum.com. Phil, thanks once again for another fine example of one of the treasures here at the NRA National Firearms Museum and another great installment of the Curator's Corner. Thank, Thank you. you, John, for having us.